Hey, it is a great day, Construction Champions, and I want to welcome you to another episode of Construction Champions Podcast. And once again, we have another amazing guest. Lori is here to talk about her experience and how you can take that and move it into your construction business. Lori, it is great to have you here today. Good to be here. Thanks. Hey, why don't you take a minute and or a few or however many you need and tell all the champions out there what got you here and why are we talking today? You know what? Um, I work with a lot of construction companies all over the nation. I'm really fortunate to have construction as a huge part of my business. I am billed as sort of a uh, insightful communication problem solver. And that's really, you know, sort of where you are as well as solving communication issues in the construction industry. Because we both know that sometimes construction people talk to one another, but we don't always talk to the people that we need to enable in order to make things happen, whether it's the customer or whether it's sometimes our teams in order to get things done the way they we really need to. So my place is really to come in and help people solve problems um, internally with conflict, solve problems with teams, and a lot of times help those people who are just moving into supervisory positions or management positions, it really help them with their communication skills to make them better. And one of the biggest things I do is I help construction companies win new business. So when they need to go in and, and pitch a new customer or a new homeowner to come, you know, let me be your construction management company, I'm the one that helps them go in and make sure that they're pitching it in a way that helps that, that new um, piece of business come home with them. Amazing. So everybody out there listening, did you hear what Lori just said? Do you, what we're about ready to, what we're about ready to learn on? is how to develop those people in your company. That's what I heard from that. And I know that's a huge issue out there for a lot of people, especially today when hiring and retaining employees has become an ever critical event. And keeping people around has to do with making an environment where they can become leaders. At least I believe so, especially in construction where we have so much talent and skilled people that unfortunately, sometimes we look outside for leadership when it's right in front of us. Well, and you know what? There's such a, there's so, so many open positions. My gosh, you know, we, we have trouble first bringing people in finding the skilled workers and keeping those skilled workers. And there are so many jobs open right now that we can't afford to lose someone because they either don't have the skills or they don't fit into our culture or whatever it is. We can't afford that. We have to be attracting the right talent. And right now, there's not a lot of talent to draw from. Our talent pool is very shallow. And that's not just in construction, that's across the board. So if we're not drawing in the right talent, we don't have the people to do the jobs that need to be done. So we've got to be drawing in that right talent. And one of the outcomes that happens with that, Ron, is that people get promoted before they're ready to be promoted. How many times when you look at the teams in construction, how many times does someone look at the team and say, okay, I'm going to promote this guy into a supervisory position because he's a great skilled worker. And then he gets into that supervisory or that management role and he's simply not ready because yes. the skills he needs in order to be a great foreman or a great super are different skills than he needs to be a great engineer or a great electrician or a great painter or a great drywaller or a great plumber or whatever it is that he does as a skilled worker those are different skills that you need than you need as a great super or a great manager or even a great project manager or a great liaison between you and the homeowner. And when we promote them because they've great got great skills in their skill area, what we find is they don't always fit great as a supervisor. And 
we set them up for failure if we don't prepare them in the right way. And when we've got a small talent pool to draw from, we are at greater risk of doing just that. So we've got to make better decisions about preparing them for that area. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more with what you're saying there. Uh, I've been personally in that position on both ends of it, where, you know, you've stepped into a role you weren't quite ready for, as well as bringing somebody into a role. So uh, I'm, I'm excited to dive into that. And as we get started here, as always, I'm going to ask the million dollar question. And that is, what makes a construction champion today? and headed through 2023? Uh, I think there are a couple of things. One is a construction champion is one who can see down the road, one who has a focus on the future. And that means being able to understand that what worked yesterday doesn't work today necessarily and may not work tomorrow. A construction champion has that future focus and really understands that we've got to be able to look at everything from software options, uh, equipment options, people options, and really has a vision toward where we're going. Uh, a champion understands communication because what happened, again, five years ago, 10 years ago, your father's leadership did, doesn't work today. The world wants something different today. Society wants something different. And a huge part of that is communicating. Being able to communicate to customers differently, being able to communicate across generations. Wow, that's that's probably the number one thing request that I get from customers. I work with people, whether it's workshops, seminars, coaching, and probably the number one request I get is how do I communicate across generations? Whether it's someone who is in one of those middle generations generations like millennials who have people older than them and younger than them, or an older generation communicating to a younger generation or a really young generation communicating up, communicating across generations is like different languages. And it's hard, but a champion has figured it out. They understand. And also communicating to customers, understanding that just because I don't value something, doesn't mean my customer doesn't value something. And that as a provider, as a construction champion, we need to be able to see things from that customer's perspective and understand that our value structure isn't always the same and communicate that way. We also need to understand as a champion that we have to have a strong enough self-esteem. And Ron, that's something you and I have talked about, which means valuing our place in not just the construction industry, but in the world. And understanding that construction has value and we are the backbone of this country. That construction has value and taking pride in what we do. That as, as a construction industry, we build not just homes, but you also, um, you know, depending on where you are in the industry, you provide an opportunity for people to worship, to learn in the schools, to drive down streets, to provide a place for people to gather. Construction is huge. And this isn't something that we can send over to another country to provide. This is something that we only do right here with people right here. And that's really valuable. And finally, in order to be a, a champion in construction, we have to have the discipline, the discipline to say yes, the discipline to say no, the discipline to control our own emotions when we need to, the discipline to help others, because um, we all know that, quite frankly, there is a suicide issue in the construction world. And so we have to have the discipline to help others and to support others. We have to have the discipline to communicate effectively and to focus on that future and make decisions that are good good decisions for down the road. So I call it the C, D, E, and F, communication, discipline, esteem, and future focus to really be a champion. I love it. You're giving me chills. Like what you're saying, <laughs> it's like that. that's the truth. Like we are, we are a lot more than just the construction industry and uh, waking up and understanding that, that we control the destiny, not the three or 4% of bad eggs in the industry. They don't control it. We control the narrative. Uh, I love what you're talking about with the communication between generations. 
that that's unpack Dude. that a little bit because that I can I can definitely see that. I mean, I I think not just in construction, I think you have to just be good at that <laughs> in general. Like if you want to just be a champion and a leader, like yeah. learning how to do that is a critical task that I yeah. think a lot of people just kind of throw to the waysides and they just chalk it up to oh, we're two completely different generations, but that doesn't help anybody. No, you know what it is, um, and and this is true just across the board. A lot of people think that talking is communicating, and it's not. Talk. I mean, if if I sit here and and talk to you in um, French, but you don't speak French, that's not communication. That's just me talking. Well, yeah. the same thing happens if I speak in my generation, if you will, and don't consider someone else's you know I grew up in South Dakota but I spent 30 years on the east coast and in South Dakota I drink pop that's the way I grew up I drank pop but on the east coast they drink soda so if I go out to the east coast and I ask for a pop they look at me like I have two heads right and I'll give you an example I came home one time I flew through Minneapolis from the east coast through Minneapolis and we got off the airplane and one of the fellas asked for a soda and he got a club soda because that's what you get in the Midwest when you ask for a soda. And he's all ticked off. And I said, I, I don't understand. What's the problem? He said, well, they didn't give me what I asked for. I said, sure, they did. They gave you exactly what you asked for. You just didn't ask for it in such a way that they understood what you really wanted. Mm -hmm. And that's the way it happens when we're speaking to people in other generations. We think that they speak our language, no matter which generation we're from. It, do, it doesn't matter which generation you're from. We think other people speak our language. And if they don't, then they can take it wrong. They can misunderstand. And that costs time, money, and relationships. So it's critical that when we're speaking or writing, when we're on the phone, when we leave voicemails, when we leave texts, whatever it is, it's critical that we sit back and say, okay, how do I say this in such a way that they'll understand it? Mm. Not what do I have to say, but how do I say it in such a way that they'll understand it? And you might find that you actually say it in a little different way. Mm. Say pop instead of soda, soda instead of pop and when we start doing that all of a sudden you find fewer misunderstandings you find that you know what to you is big to them isn't what to you is fast to them isn't you know you think you're including them they don't think that you think you're being gruff they think you're being gruff you don't that's a very common one that, <laughs> that some people think, well, you know, he was just rude to me. You know, if you don't say good morning, some people think that was just rude. You think mm. I just didn't say good morning, had nothing to do with you. That person might spend all day thinking, oh, God, what did I do? Right. Yeah. You never gave yeah. it a second thought, but it matters to some people. So that communication can really make a difference. I 100% agree. Not, I mean, from employee to customer, anywhere you're talking like that, that makes a lot of sense. And taking a moment to understand what exactly you're saying and how are you going to say it. I, I think we have a real notion to just kind of speak off the cuff a lot of times sure. and just we're very reactional in the construction industry because that's kind of the nature of the beast. Is, you know, sure. when you have a problem, it has to be solved. How do I react? How do I solve this? Because a lot of times it, it it's the project needs to keep moving forward. Sure, it's right now. Got to go. Got to go. Yeah. 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 And we don't take the time to think about exactly how might this come across to what am I doing uh, differently when we're not talking to somebody that's just like us. You know, like okay. we're used to. And, and that's why when you take someone who's a really strong, skilled worker, who spent their entire career, think about what, what has happened here. You take that person who's a great electrician or a great plumber, or whatever it is, is their expertise. And they are really good at it. Think about how they got there. They rolled up their sleeves and they worked on it. And they probably primarily worked on it alone. And they focused on this one thing and they were responsible for getting their job done. 
And then yes. one day you said, congratulations, you're going to run the team. <laughs> right. Yeah. And now, and, and not only that, they loved what they did, right. They love doing this. And what do you think is their least favorite thing to do? Go to meetings <laughs> and solve people problems. Right. And so one day they get, they got this promotion and you took them and you took them off this ladder and you put them on a completely different ladder where all of a sudden the biggest thing they spend their time doing is solving people problems. Mm. And the biggest part of their job is communication. Whether it's talking to people up the ladder, talking to customers, talking to management, filling out paperwork, talking to employees, doing performance reviews, oh, the headaches, right? Instead of rolling up their sleeves and doing what they love, mm. which is where part of a morale issue comes in. Now, I, you took me away from doing what I love and you're asking me to communicate. So one, I never learned how to communicate really effectively to learn that second language or third language or fourth language, because Lord knows there are a lot of languages I got to learn to work with this team. And now I'm over here. So it's critical that with this transition, they learn, you get them into it. And I'm just a real believer that yes, a mentoring program is important, but a coaching program is more important. You don't throw someone on a basketball team and say, watch everybody else and you'll learn how to play this game. You pull them off on the side and you say, okay, now let's learn how to dribble. Let's learn how to shoot free throws. Let's learn how to do layups, just you and me just you and me. And when you get good at these things, we'll put you on the team on the floor, but you don't just throw the kid on the floor and say, good luck out there. You get them in a coaching program one-on-one -on -one, and you teach them how to do some of these things. So you set them up for success because once they grow from one-on-one -on -one doing their job into a supervisory or a foreman position, their job is 80-20, 80% 80 communication and 20% rolling up their sleeves and doing the handiwork. Mm -hmm. And without that, you're really setting them up for failure. It really is about that communication. With that communication, they, they will be champions. They will be your champions. Yeah, I 100% I agree with that. And what we're talking about here is just that developing leadership within the industry and within your own company. Uh, and I think I, I got a question that I, I think a lot of the, the listeners out there would have is how do you communicate and develop that, that, that individual that really wants to make the jump? but they're not ready. Like they, they, they're, they don't want to roll their sleeves up. They want to move into that leadership role. They're, they're really hungry for that, but you know, they're not ready. And like ha having that conversation. So it, it sets them up because you don't just want to piss them off and you don't no. want to, <laughs> but you want to be able to have them understand that, Hey, now is not the time, but we want you to be able to become that leader one day. How, how would you go about having that conversation? You know what? That's a really good question. Um, one, like you said, you never, you rarely want to squash someone's dreams. You rarely want to do that. But this is to ask yourself, and I, I am a believer that good parenting skills are good management skills. And I'm not <laughs> suggesting you, you treat your people like children. That's not what I suggest. But I am suggesting that you want the same thing for your team that you want for children, right? You want them to develop. You want to teach them how to make good decisions when you're not there. You want to help them, you know, climb the ladder, be better at what they are, right? So it's the same mm -hmm. kind of things that you want for your team. If you asked yourself, that question about your own children or children in general, your answer would be, okay, I got a kid who's not ready to be on, on the, the A squad, right? But maybe mm -hmm. what I do is, again, I'm going to say you, you first start by giving him a few more responsibilities than he has. You make sure that you talk about opportunities down the road. You talk about, okay, before you're able to have this role, here are some specific skills you want. 
You want to be able to do these things. One of the things that the younger generations want more so than the older generations is they want a checklist. Mm -hmm. They want to know when I've accomplished these things at this level, when I get an A in this skill and a B plus in this skill and a B in this skill, when I've done these things, I'll be ready to move here. Mm -hmm. What they don't like is you just hang in there. You just keep working hard. They hate that. So instead, you sit down and you say, okay, this is what it looks like in our organization. When mm. you accomplish these seven things at this level, this ex, you know, this is what's acceptable, A, B, C, whatever it is. When you accomplish these things, you'll be ready to move on to this level. Now, if you're having trouble with any of these, we're going to get you somebody to work with you. We're going to send you to basketball camp. We're going to mm. send you to whatever it is, we're going to get you a one-on-one -on -one coach to help you with these things so that you can reach that. Or maybe we're going to send you to, to basketball camp today mm. so that you can reach that level in the next six months. We're going to put you in a six month training program, coaching program, or we're going to send, send you to a leadership academy, if you will, so that once a week you're going to a class learning skills so that you have that down the road. Give them a look down the road that says there is an opportunity here for you and here's what it looks like. Give them more responsibilities where they aren't set up for failure. Teach them how to make good decisions. And when you teach them how to make good decisions, they're more likely to make good decisions. So you're, you're developing them as they go along. But that checklist is critical because what we find a lot of times is that we speak in those vague, you just keep at it. You just keep working. It doesn't work. Tell them, here's what it takes to move up. You got to be able to do this. Your people have to be able to say that you're doing this a five out of five, three out of five times. You got to demonstrate this and make it as measurable as possible. And then Okay, when you've done those things, we'll talk about that. But make sure they've got an opportunity to look down the road. They need to see that opportunity, just like you did, quite frankly. Just like you did when you were that age. Yeah, right? no, yeah, I love that. And being a being a father, I can relate. Like, you know, having those conversations. And uh, I think actually kind of using both of them side by side, you can become a probably, uh, you know, I'm looking at it as I could become a better parent utilizing some of the conversations I've had in the past. And I could be a better leader by using some of the conversations that I've had with my son. So I, I love that perspective. And, you know, leadership within the industry is just something that we have to learn how to build, build because it, it, it's an industry where, we can create our own leaders and the trajectory for careers could be absolutely amazing. Uh, do you find that, you know, having this kind of stuff set up in house or going out or what's one of the best ways a, for a leader to be able to take action, to start being able to put some of these plans in place for their company? Well, the first thing is make sure you're walking the talk. That's the mm. first thing you you have to you have to walk the talk if people come to work and they see you showing up late not you know not um living with integrity not treating your customers well not treating your employees well you know it you can do all you can you can say anything you want to but if you're not walking the talk it doesn't work that way i'm mm. also a believer and i i'm sure that you are as well i'm a believer in looking for support and resources wherever you can find them and i'm a believer in looking for specific things when you look for like like with a coach i'm a believer in finding someone who understands not only the expertise that you're looking so for instance i'm a i'm a communication expert that's my expertise mm -hmm. um, but i'm also a believer in working with somebody who understands your industry so i don't work with people who are um in for instance i, I don't know in 
I don't know, in pharmaceutical, for instance, pharmaceutical is not my industry. It's, it's not where I work, but I work with construction companies and uh -huh. I have worked with construction companies for 30 years. I hung my shingle as a communication expert well over 30 years ago. And I I've spent time working in communication long before that, but I hung my shingle 30 years ago and construction has been a huge part of my roster for that long. And I know it's one of the things that my customers, my, my clients will tell you is that it makes a huge difference that I understand the industry. Oh. And so it's not a generic feedback or it's not generic coaching that comes to you. You wouldn't hire a baseball coach to coach soccer. You'd hire a soccer coach to coach soccer. So I'm a real believer in finding someone who understands what the person needs to learn so can assess what the person needs to learn, but they also need to understand the culture. They need to understand the industry so that they understand how that fits, what that person really needs to learn, the skill set they need to learn within that industry to really be a champion within the industry. So I think mm -hmm. that's really important for, for who you're leaning on as a resource. I love it. I absolutely love it, Lori. You wouldn't be here if you weren't a champion in construction. Uh, today, it has been absolute f fabulous having you here, having this conversation. For all of our listeners out here, if they wanted to reach out to you or wanted to have a conversation about communicating uh, with the expert here, how would they go about that? You can reach me a couple of ways. Um, I'm on social media just everywhere, and you can see my name underneath here, right? Um, it's Lori, which is L-A-U-R-I-E, Lori, and it's Richards. That's with an S, Lori Richards. And my email is just Lori at LoriRichards.com. And my website is simply www, and you do have to type it in. I know it's old fashioned, but you have to type in the three W's for me, www.loririchards.com. On the website, you'll see a variety of the different courses and seminars and coaching and all the different things that I do, but it's really easy to just reach out to me on email. That's the best and fastest way to reach me. Follow me on LinkedIn. You'll find me at Lori Richards. Follow me on Facebook. I don't do much on Instagram. LinkedIn is really where I am because it's more of a business platform for me. But reach out anytime and I'm happy to answer questions or just to, uh, and, and I'm happy to extend to you with your listeners, uh, happy to provide a, a 15 minute consult with anyone to just, you know, listen to what you're working on and help provide you any kind of guidance I can just as a courtesy for you, Ron, and, and your listeners if they want to take advantage of that just reach out on email and i'm sure you'll put that information in the notes and I'll yeah yeah be happy to extend that to you and your folks so and awesome, I, i'll give you my phone number two and they can reach me on the phone as well okay sounds fantastic Lori. thank you for being here today certainly it's good to be here thanks for having me oh we loved it so are you construction champions out there? Lori's information will be in the show notes. Make sure to reach out to her. Check out what she's doing. If it's something that applies, go, go take advantage of it. Let's learn how we can be better communicators in the industry. Like, subscribe, comment on what you loved about this episode, questions that you have, and construction champions, until next time.